Hey, Sassy fam. Welcome to your Sunday check-in. I hope you're well. I hope you are fabulous. How was that total solar eclipse? Again, even if you couldn't view it or you weren't in the position, hopefully you felt something. I know I did. And I had, uh, even though I was in the path of totality um, this year, you know, we had such heavy, heavy cloud coverage, so I was not able to get any footage on my phone because the filter for it was just extra sensitive. The glasses I was using, however, I was able to see some of it, and that was breathtaking. Oh, it was absolutely breathtaking. At the, the height of the totality where it's total darkness, it's it's inspiring to experience that, the silence, and it was indeed silent. It looked like it was 9 p.m., on my street, right, at 1.30 in the afternoon in Central Texas, so, <laughs> which is to say exceptionally dark. And then as it lifted, the birds came out singing, animals started moving around prior to that uh, while it was still crossing. Oh my gosh, all the local neighborhood dogs were worked up barking the whole thing. Uh, Cinnamon, thankfully, was at daycare because I knew better. <laughs> I didn't want her to get all worked up and uh, hear the other neighborhood dogs kicking off, but... Uh, Right there at the height of totality, all was silent. All was silent. Oh my gosh, it was so special, so amazing. So even though I didn't get full views and I couldn't get any footage, that wasn't the point. Oh, witnessing something like that, just the awe of it. The words fail me. It's breathtaking, it's inspiring, it's it's a movement of change. It's really hard to describe, you just feel it. And that's why I want you to be open to it, even if you couldn't visually witness it, right? Okay, let's see what's going on. So this last week we did... Uh, what did we do? We did Aces Week, which was really fun. I had a lot of fun with those. Um, it was light. There was freshness in it, and that was the whole idea. And this upcoming week will be the in-depth for yours and theirs. And I'll tell you, indeed, it was in-depth. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. For everybody, all 12 signs, all the collectives got a 40-plus message. <laughs> By that, I mean in excess of 40 minutes, still under 50. So, guys, I think what we experienced here... <laughs> was a really strong influence because I can honestly say there's a lot of intricacy in these upcoming readings, a lot of details, uh, a lot of back and forth. The complexity was quite high for all 12 signs, so I know things have been shifted and moved around, but I can honestly say for at least half of you, ooh, some of your reactions were real, honest, raw, authentic. So do keep in mind when you're watching your messages next week. <laughs> Do keep in mind, what you are experiencing is real and valid, and I always, and this is my number one thing about tarot, I always want you to do what's in the best interest for you, so long as you are consolidated in it, you understand something to be your truth, and you're acting upon it, and you have no conflict of interest with it, so be it, okay? It's a good decision, but I saw, I'm not going to lie, honey. And I know what you're going to say. It's the Mercury retrograde. It's the Mercury. There's always a Mercury retrograde. Okay, always. Except for when it's not, which is maybe a couple of weeks, months or so out of the year. There's always some sort of retrograde. But I, I know that's what everybody's going to say because I saw lots of folks returning in various states of not healed with very little insider understanding. And the reaction was quite strong. There was a lot of, uh uh. <laughs> But it was very elaborate, and let me tell you why, uh-uh, Christina. This is why I'm not having it with X, Y, Z, and so-and-so. Oh, I believe it. I believed all of you. <laughs> I'm laughing about it because I could not believe the consistency I saw for all 12 signs in various states of, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Well, with this nonsense, not with this shit, right? It was wild stuff. So just putting that out there right now, next week, view with caution. Okay. View with caution. Ooh, we're going to kick off some sensitivities. All right. Anything else, you guys? Um, not much else to say. We should have a couple of uh, sassy satire shorts coming up relatively soon. Oh, and uh, to the subscriber who mentioned, this is great. So this is one of the reasons why I really enjoyed that extra sassy segment is because I started getting feedback almost immediately about the decks. And thank you all so much. Um, I really appreciate your response, even though it's a non-professional or informal review. I had a great time uh, making it. It was fun for me. So yeah, I look forward to doing something like that again with my other tarot decks and oracles. But some great responses about where I could find uh, other decks or variations of it. So one of the decks I do like is the Earth Real Visions. And the only reason, like I say, 
in that review, I don't use it more is because it's so terribly pale. It does not show up well on camera. Now, a lot of the detail is going to be lost regardless, you know, that's just how it is to work with cards on camera unless I do a close-up shot. But the idea is the viewers like to be able to see something that they recognize. And this deck is just not good for very much visual reference at the um, distance for which I have the camera. So a subscriber said, hey, do you know they have an updated version, the Luna? Ooh, so I appreciate you. I got it immediately, as you see. <laughs> because <laughs> it really is it still stands true it's the perfect size deck for my hands and uh, yeah the illustrations are a little easier to see uh, they darkened the background so it wasn't just me that had the thought you know what i'm saying <laughs> so this is great to the, sub uh, the subscriber excuse me who recommended that deck that was brilliant thank you this was released last year you know and unless you go out of your way to keep up with uh, updated decks and i don't i don't need to i have so many uh, there's no reason I would have known, so I appreciate your feedback on that. As you can see, that's what we're using today, yeah? So that is the Earth Real Visions Luna Edition. It's beautiful. I already really enjoy working with it, and like I said, it's the perfect size deck for my hands, so let's get to it. Let's get cracking. Uh, we're going to do a brief check-in. That's going to be a 369, and then we will throw down some charms for everybody, yeah? Like always, take it resonates, leave it does not, and if there's more than one energy clearly apparent to you on this board today, then you reverse those energies as you see fit. Like always, your sign will be time-stamped in the description box as well as the comments I got you. You guys, I will see you at your sign. Leo, what's up? What's going on? Show me, Leo, please. Ooh. Ooh, it's got that, that new deck snap. You know, it's fresh, fresh deck. So it's got that hard snap. Ooh. What's going on, please, for that Leo Collective? Hi. If you're near the channel, my name's Christina. A little different. What's going on? Show me that Leo Collective, please. Show me that Leo Collective. Show me that Leo Collective. What's going on, please, for Leo? Okay. Okay. Queen of Wands. Oh, yes. The star. Beautiful. Three of Swords. Yeah, it's going to be okay. I promise. It's going to be okay. Okay. Queen of Pentacles. Strength. And the Queen of Swords. Yeah, we got some energy here today that's not just you. You are showing up. All right. Six of Pentacles. Ace of Wands. I had that feeling. Five of Wands. Okay. You have a beauty in you. You really do. Okay. Queen of Wands. Sense of self, direction, purpose, drive, particularly being backed up by the star. This is what I want you to navigate by. I know it's not always straightforward to you. You have purpose, you have focus, and you have a strong feeling in you and around you. Let that guide you. Because I can tell that you're going through something with somebody, but it also looks like it's one of those things that can be worked through if two people do their part. You know, that, so that requires active participation on both sides. You have a deep, beautiful dream in you to reach for something that includes you, but also requires the effort of someone else. I see it. And there's pain there with the Three of Swords. You don't want there to be. It's a vision that's within you that calls to you, and you would like to reach for it, but you also understand it requires the effort and participation of someone else, okay? But what I like is how deeply you feel this. So that means it's real to you, and it's authentic to you, just like the disappointment and pain is as well, okay? And, all, and, and just to send an opening, whatever this is, it means a lot to you, okay? I don't think you've given up on it. I don't. Queen of Pentacles, Strength, that's you, and the Queen of Swords, there is this idea of you trying to meet someone halfway, if they're up for it. Because in your heart, you would desire that. And I hope that they meet you halfway. I do. I really do. It could be that there's a stiffness surrounding this person's energy. They're not giving too much away. I don't know. But the Queen of Pentacles says, I know myself. I know what I can do. I'm strong. I'm not without resources. I'm not without the ability. I'm not without the know-how. I can do this. I know you can. Okay? You've made that clear. And like I said, it would mean a lot to you. So I don't quite know what the reaction will be on face value or if they can meet you in that space. I just see your beautiful willingness to try. And again, let's keep in mind, guys, this does not have to be a romantic partner. It could be. I don't know. I just know that there's clearly more than one energy here today. 
And we have this idea of the Six of Pentacles and the Ace of Wands. Hey, can we put some healthy energy into this? And the Five of Wands, though, is surrounding it. There's some frustration here, okay, about whether or not this is an achievable balance. There might even be some blockage surrounding it. And that seems to be one of the first things that needs to be addressed in order to achieve a smoother balance with this person, okay? So the idea is, is that we anticipate or expect a sort of rough handling, okay? And if you know that's true, then that means you understand how you can engage in this or that you should engage in this. If you anticipate some rough edges here, an argument, and you're still willing to participate, there you go, okay? But the idea is, is that the Ace of Wands here, we want it to trump and succeed in the Six of Pentacles to make things smoother, even if that means addressing difficult energies or topics of conversations or behaviors, okay? Something like this. Because the Six of Pentacles is here, a little bit further out in future orientation, not too far away, that means that this is actually possible. Okay, but it does require a willingness to convert whatever is negative into something that's positive and thus create the smoothing effect. So sometimes, guys, we have to present arguments and participate in those rough conversations in order to achieve this. So you have to know that it's worth it to you. Your opening suggests says that I think it is worth it to me. You know, it means a lot to you. Their reaction, I do not know. But it looks like that's what's going to be figured out between you two, okay? Is there still something here worth balancing with, or is this an argument that will never cease? Okay, something like this. So just for reflection, Queen of Pentacles, Strength, that's you, and the Queen of Swords. Okay. Your bottom row. Since we're clarifying, I, I'm not Excuse me, since we're not clarifying, we could take a little bit more time to show the cards. Do let me know if you like this deck. I'll continue to use it. Even though I was breaking it in on my side, this is the first time I'm showing it on camera, so the feedback would be welcome. I can already tell that it shows better than its original variation. Okay. Uh, but just, you know, FYI, let me know. We have the letter K. We have the heart with the nurse's cap, possibly an indication of profession here, such as nurse or medical profession, but also just the most basic definition of healing the heart, or we would like to. We have the hot air balloon, the symbol that says we need to rise higher in the sky to look down below and see what the heck's going on. The owl originally was in reverse. Somebody was not trying to think or discuss these issues. Okay. So while it would mean a lot to you, like I said, participation takes both sides. And you're even saying you're willing to engage and discuss those difficult subjects if it means resolution. Again, at this level, while I respect what you desire and what it is that you wish, I do think it's incredibly straightforward. It requires participation. Okay? I don't know that they will, but the Six of Pentacles suggests it's a possibility. Okay, I hope this helps you. Take care. Be well. Sag, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Show me Sag, please. What's going on, please, for Sagittarius? Show me Sag. What's going on, please, for Sagittarius? What's up? I was saying using this that could have done with a little more coating, but for the most part, it's pretty darn good. All right. What's up? Mm -hmm. Nine of Swords, Nine of Cups, mm -hmm. the Three of Cups. Why is that on your mind, honey? Why is that on your mind? Mm -hmm. The Empress, King of Cups, the Nine of Pentacles, Knight of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, the Four of Cups. Okay. Okay. Okay, you're showing me anxiety about connecting with somebody you'd like to, but you don't know if you should. Um, that's not an accusation, it's not a judgment. I'm reading the cards. Nine of Swords to the Nine of Cups. They kind of knock each other out. So what remains then is the Three of Cups. It's on your mind as we 
are currently in the state of almost, eh, not quite mid-month, but thereabouts. Yeah, no, no, no. By the time this comes out, it will be mid-month. Yeah, Nine of Swords, Nine of Cups. So they kind of knock each other out. There's that sense of overwhelming mental anxiety that it knocks us out of tune with ourselves with the Nine of Cups. So Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment based on the idea that we love ourselves. So you're saying this matter is such a particular stressful subject for you that sometimes you lose sight of what it is you really want or really feel. And the mind has a tendency to do that, guys. The mind is a powerful machine. It really is. So too is the heart. One typically tries to win over the other. And right now your mind is trying to win over an emotional subject. That anxiety that I'm seeing here shuts this down. Okay. Particularly your sense of self and what it is that if this wasn't here, you'd be able to hear yourself clearly about what it is that's right for you and how you would connect to it yourself personally. So I know the truth of you is in here, but it's hard to hear it right now. Okay. What remains is the Three of Cups connecting at the emotional level with somebody. Who that is, I don't know. That's up to you. You would know because that's such a distinct opening. It's the one that, that preoccupies your mind and makes you feel like you've lost your sense of self and trying to answer a question that doesn't seem to have an answer. That's who I'm talking about. So whoever fits the dynamic, that's it. Do we connect with them? Because there's an emotional desire to do so, no matter how simple. And the Three of Cups is pretty simple. It should be light, celebratory, ideally connecting with people who see the best in you and want to support you, even if it's just in a small kind of social way. It's not the point. It's achievable. I mean, you say you don't know about that. But then we, we kind of fast forward just a wee bit. The Empress, King of Cups, Nine of Pentacles, my, my, my. My, my, my. My, my, my. That's some real, beautiful, authentic self. A sense of individuation, a full heart, productivity, love, nurturing, caring. High value, all over that. High value, strong sense of self, strong heartbeat. Unapologetic heartbeat, too. When the Empress has a heartbeat that strong, they know who they are. That doesn't mean they're perfect, doesn't mean you're perfect, whomever this is. But I'm actually seeing it as a combined energetic effort between two people. Okay. This is what counts right here. Not the fears. But like who we are really in real life. This is what actually shows. This can prevent us from experiencing the real world with somebody. Here's the truth. How much you experience this to the degree and frequency might keep you from the truth. Again, not an accusation. I can only tell you the pitfalls that reoccur over and over again with people when the mind is such a high state of activity that it completely hijacks our experience and says, stay away, stay away. But what we could potentially connect to is so much better than the fears of our mind. And it's beautiful. The Empress King of Cups, Nine of Pentacles. Between your two's combined effect, it might feel like the subject has that much more weight. It means a lot to us. You mean a lot to them, too. Knight of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, the Four of Cups. At some point, and that is actual real 3D activity, action. Okay, Knight of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, Four of Cups. Uh, someone will be taking action soon, either yourself, okay, or this other person. The idea is, is that I need to work through this because I'm upset, four of cups. So I am kind of defaulting to you as that's your opening, okay? But yes, it could be a reversal. I really don't know without clarification, okay? But uh, again, it's not an accusation or a sense of pointing fingers or responsibility. Someone here is going to be taking action in the name of working through this because I don't want to feel these four cups anymore. I don't want to feel the sadness anymore. I don't want to feel the upset anymore. I literally need to do something and take action towards this. And uh, it seems to me the motivation in reality is so much stronger than perhaps the fears that bind us. Okay? And that's some really strong, beautiful, natural authentic energy, not just one person. I think it's a combined effect. I do. You both must possess these qualities in some way. Okay. 
Again, this is a brief check-in. Excuse me, brief check-in. But I think that's enough to get us started, yes? The letters P, F, the word practical, which is the medallion associated with Virgo, okay? We have the letter J, the owl upright, okay? Wisdom, insight, understanding, okay, knowledge, and then heart with the nurse's cap. Yeah, healing of the heart, that kind of thing. Okay, so Tony, I hope this helped you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Aries, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Show me Aries. What's going on, please, for my Aries crew? Show me Aries. Once more. Happy birthday to you. Show me Aries, please. What's going on, please, for Aries? Okay. Page of Swords. Mm -hmm. Ten of Cups. The Magician. Interesting. You're curious. Bare minimum curious. You're looking at a Ten of Cups here. Okay. And the Magician. It's interesting. It's almost like you're, you're toying with the idea of I could manifest more. But I'm not sure about that. The Page of Swords. Huh. Interesting. The moon, the king of wands, the ten of wands. There is a difficult truth you're trying to receive coming out of the moon. Something to do with ambition, drive, legacy, and it's hard for you. There's a truth trying to emerge out of your moon. Do I want this? And it's a truth you struggle with a great deal. There's parts of yourself where you can see yourself engaging in a Ten of Cups. So the Ten of Cups is in a, a large emotional circle. Okay, could be spouse, kids, but also family, friends, but people who have emotional stakes in our lives. They support, love us, care about us. We check in with them, right? They check in with us. They should love us and return, that kind of thing. So it's like you're casually eyeballing that with the Page of Swords. You're like, I don't know. I don't know if I want that. I don't know if I want the whole thing. I don't know if I want the whole enchilada, Christina. I don't know. Sometimes I just like the sides, you know? <laughs> but the magician's there, so be careful. Even casually wanting that for yourself, but without fully realizing it, you can still make things happen. So just, you know, FYI. If you want a Ten of Cups, you really need to know that. It's going to require something beyond the Page of Swords. Because the magician has powers that go beyond small observation. Okay. In other words, you could pull something towards you, and uh, by the time it arrives, you may not be in a position to take ownership of it because it's not a fully realized manifestation. And the Ten of Cups is a powerful thing, you know. But uh, the moon, king of wands, and the ten of wands, yeah, you have uh, something coaxing forward from you that you might have kept under the moon. Why is you seeing this and realizing it? Why is it so difficult with the Ten of Wands? Because like I say, there's times when you can see yourself in it and your energy rises to that ambition. Like, yeah, that could be me. I could be that Aries. I could be that Aries. Maybe not, though. You're trying to figure it out at the emotional level because it looks like it's the emotions regarding the subject that got suppressed a little bit. Perhaps you always assumed you never wanted the Ten of Cups. Maybe, energetically speaking, you're starting to change your mind, rather your spirit, and it's taken a minute for you to get comfortable with this thought or this feeling, because it seems alien to you. It does. It does seem alien to you, foreign to you. Like, you never thought you'd be that family Aries, you know. Maybe you thought you would never have the passion for that, and what does that even mean? What is that kind of particular ambition to be a family man or a family woman? What does that mean? You know, and it's probably something you just assumed was done and dusted a long time ago that you would never put your particular stamp on that or you never had that particular vision. And that's fine. That's not a judgment call, guys. Not everybody's ambition is the Ten of Cups. Some people just want a two. Some people just want a six. Some people just want a, an even balance that they can participate in from time to time. No commitment. That's cool. So long as you know who you are. That's it. You know, and it's kind of like you're starting to wonder is this part of me? Three of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles, and Justice. That's, that's what you're trying to figure out, the expanse. Why are you feeling that? 
And what does that mean to give to this? It looks like a brand new construct to you. And you are not rushing into anything, nor should you. Uh, with justice being there, you're saying you want to understand what your commitment is to this. And it's just started. It, your pages have just started in this respect in terms of thought and potential investment. And it's kind of like a, a clean slate for you. I'm saying this as a brand new structure you've never really considered before. And you don't know which pieces go where. <laughs> And, you know, karmically, justice, justice, excuse me, speaking, technically speaking, it's like, where do I begin? And uh, I just see you contemplating this now. What does it mean to have this kind of structure? What is required of me? What does the investment look like? Where do I start? So this is all in terms of contemplation. Um, and you're trying to figure out, and this is my biggest point for you today, is, is that correct for you? Is it correct for you? And what does that look like? How do you start that process? And with who? Are you even interested in that? <laughs> Again, we haven't fully answered the question. It's so new for you. It's such a fresh idea. It even looks novel. But a lot of it has to do with this emotional discomfort. Ambition, too hard. Ambition, drive, I could... I could be open to that, but also, P.S., it's really hard. Perhaps you always assumed it would be very hard or that was just never your gig. You know what I'm saying? And it's just now starting to come out of the moon for you. A very slow coaxing process for this areas I'm looking at. So it's just, it's just not something, like I said, this idea of expansion at that level feels really alien and novel to you. But you are considering it specifically. Is it right for you? And if so, where would you start? That's enough to be getting on with, okay? It may not be the most thrilling check-in reading, but it's important to somewhere and somewhere. So there you go. There you go. You'll have more conclusions. The more you continue to work through this, you will understand more and more if this is your thing. Some of you have some Leo in your chart. Ah. Generous is the key word here. So this is Leo's medallion, but it came up word first, which is the word generous. Um, some of you have that idea that in order to have that kind of life, that kind of family, that kind of setup, you would have to be not just generous, but overly generous. And uh, in that respect of really sharing, because it does, I, I completely agree with you in that respect at the Ten of Cups, you have to give more of yourself, not less, right? And it requires a great deal of sacrifice of your personal time and, and your own sense of self in order to literally develop the lives of other people. That's what it is to be kind of deeply immersed in that Ten of Cups. You, you know, we're talking about significant others and kids and things like that. And that means you have to be overly generous with who you are as an emotional being. And I told you, that's what I saw over here. It wasn't your fear of resources under the moon. It wasn't your fear of taking on the responsibility. It's, it was the fear of sharing yourself more there's times you can feel like you can rise to it, and there's times where you feel like you cannot, and the whole thing seems too damn difficult. So in terms of that being generous of the emotional self, giving more of yourself, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what it is to step into a Ten of Cups. That's true. Okay. So I think you're doing a good service to yourself that you're thinking about these things. I just want you to be aware of your manifestation, because even contemplating that low-key desire, it can still attract so just be aware of that, okay? But is it right for me? That is the question. Letters F, R, and the feather. Light as a feather, of course. And then we have the air influence, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, and then also for some of you, feather just might be a confirmation, okay? I hope this helped you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Aquarius, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's going on, please, for Aquarius? What's going on? Show me Aquarius, show me Aquarius, show me Aquarius. What's going on, please? For Aquarius. Okay. The Four of Swords, Ten of Wands, Page of Swords. Yeah, I feel like you're not able to take in too much new information right now. It's looking like we're overdue for rest. Okay, just letting you know right now. Six of Cups, the High Priestess, and the Five of Swords. I, mm -hmm. Hold on, let me get back to that. Nine of Pentacles, Strength, mm, the Hierophant, you know. I want you to stick to yourself. There's something here that presents as conflict 
and you are showing me mental and physical exhaustion towards it, okay? I want you to go ahead and take that rest, all right? Four of Swords, Ten of Wands, the Page of Swords. It's, in fact, something that is coming across as so burdensome that you literally don't have the room for mental expansion on the subject. In other words, it's all weight and no solutions. We need to rest on this the Four of Swords. I just don't see that you're in a position to take on literally any new information until you've had an opportunity to rest on what it is you are working with currently, energetically, mentally, emotionally, and then maybe you can find some new space because right now you don't have any new space. But the Aquarius I'm looking at, we need to take a break here. There's something here so mentally, physically, emotionally exhausting or all free. I just, I want you to back off. Give yourself some breathing room to work with the energies that are already here, which seems like it's too much already. And then maybe you'll have room to expand, and I'll tell you why. It's not a coincidence that you feel so mentally and physically exhausted. We have Six of Cups, the High Priestess, the Five of Swords. Your intuition, you don't know if you can trust it, and I'll tell you why. Typically, I think you're an Aquarius who would say, yeah, I'm okay, I'm intuitive, you know, I'm okay. I, I have a pretty good feel for things, except for this. There is a Six of Cups here, or some sort of soul bond, a connection that you have that is precious to you, but you don't know if you can trust it. You don't know if you can trust your feelings around it, around it. You don't know if you can trust the memories connected to it, and that's a big deal. There's something about this connection that feels tainted, and you don't know how far it goes, and you're kind of tired of thinking about it. When we get into the issues of trust, and then you, therefore it affects your own ability to trust yourself and how you perceive this connection, that's a problem because it tells me it's a long-standing issue, especially if you get to that point of being exhausted, being able to see the forest through the trees, that kind of thing. You don't know where one concept begins or ends. Can I trust my connection with this person, my memories, what they said, the meaning, the context, or motivation? There's something about it that feels really confusing overall. This connection feels very confusing to you. Can you trust it? Is the best of yourself in it? Are you receiving the best from it? And you question all of it to the point you don't have any answers and therefore you're exhausted. So guys, if you're at that place in your life where typically you pride yourself on being able to feel your way around things, but you can't with this one, that in and of itself should make you stop. I would advise you then to kind of put that sense of feeling aside if you can't trust it for this situation and you need to look exclusively at what you know, not what you feel. Because for some reason, your feeling in this connection is off. It's way off. And if it gets to the point where you can't trust them or yourself or a combination of the two because your sense of memory, emotional loyalty, or nostalgia gets in the way, like I said, it's time to take a break and stop trying to feel your way around it and maybe lean into it logically. It seems weird to say that to an Aquarius, but it's true. Um, looking at Aquarius, like I said, you typically feel your way around these connections. And for some reason, you can't with this one. There is a <clears throat> trust issues, sabotage issues with this one. Your reaction or participation in it, therefore, like I said, it leads to trust issues with yourself, and therefore you lose that sense of feeling. That's how intuition gets destroyed. Okay? Just because we have a, pre a connection that's precious to us, if it's not being expressed well, the energy, the communication, the actions we start to literally lose our feel for the connection. Okay, and it's authentic presentation. We question its authentic presentation and you, you stack that up over time, you see the results. Okay, Nine of Pentacles, Strength, the Hierophant. <clears throat> I want you to stay committed to yourself, your ideas and your principles for now. I want you to work in what you know, Nine of Pentacles, trust yourself, lean into yourself, your skills, and your abilities. Um, like I said, I feel like you need some time with yourself about this, and that means getting back in tune with yourself and your grounding principles. With the hair fund here, I want you to reinforce what it is you do know because you are experienced, okay? As an individual, you are capable of having experiences, thinking, and doing for yourself, okay? So I want you to commit to what you know and show strength to reinforce your own sense of self. Like I said, we need a bit of a break from this. Okay. Lean into what you do know. Take strength in that. Commit to that. Above all, commit to yourself. The answers to this will come to you in time. Okay. 
Let's get some charms for you, please. <clears throat> Apologies. I know it's annoying. <clears throat> As I said, I know it's annoying, but it's, trust me, it's more annoying for me. I'm very aware of it. <laughs> If the humidifier isn't running, then the dehumidifier is running. Sometimes I should just let them run at the same time and they can battle it out. The star, that's you. Don't forget who you are, okay? Remember that. You've come a long way in this life. I want you, like I said, if you can't lean into it logically or intuitively, go by experience, okay? The letters F, M, the big heart. Yes, big feeler here. I know, I see it. Like I said, you cannot have intuition without some sense of feeling attached to you. You have to know your emotional self more often than not. Because that's really where intuition comes from, is a strong sense of feeling of the self. Otherwise, you're not being guided by anything. So I know that you have a big feeling. I know you have a big heart. But in this connection, it's not working. Okay? There's elements about it that you don't trust. And you, therefore, you're having a hard time trusting yourself. I want you to pull back. Focus a little bit more on what makes you you. That will tell you what's up. Oh, we also have the letter W, the Eiffel Tower. That sense of strength, that it's possible, anything's achievable. Even the most obscure, fantastic, or romantic dreams are possible when built in reality. Ten of Pentacles, you are strong. You have managed to achieve and build a lot. The Eiffel Tower with the Ten of... I'm sorry, the Tree of Life with the Ten of Pentacles... You have managed to build a lot, as fantastical as it may seem. You have done quite a bit. When they're saying and pointing out that you need to remember that you're strong and stand by that, that is no joke. Okay? Grace, honey, I hope this helps you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Gemini, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Some of that Gemini Collective. Some of that Gemini Collective. Some of that Gemini Collective. What's going on? Show me that Gemini Collective, please. Show me that Gemini Collective. Let's do one more. Show me Gemini, please. All right. What's up? What's going on? Page of Cups. Mm -hmm. The Queen of Swords. The King of Cups, eh? Yeah. Okay. Seven of Cups. Ace of Wands. The Emperor. <laughs> I like this. All right. Well, now nah. five of one. Oh, cool. No, that's wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not much. I'm not really telling you anything you don't already know, but it's nice to see the confirmation of progress, right? Okay. I see you kind of uh, making a workable piece between yourself and someone else. There's clearly more than one energy on this board today. I have a page of cups, a queen of swords, and a king of cups. We're keeping our heart space open, Okay. We are keeping our heart space open towards somebody. And it feels good. It does feel good. It does feel good for you. You like this. You like the flow of it. It kind of helps you relax your mental state. I'm not quite sure how to put this. But when I see you open your heart towards it, your mind relaxes. Okay. There's something about this particular cup or emotional flow that you have with someone else that feels like it relaxes you. It does. It helps you ease down a little bit. Okay. Seven of Cups, the Ace of Wands, the Emperor. In fact, the more you keep yourself open towards this, the stronger you feel because it feels correct for you. So I don't know who it is you're responding to, but I like I like how it shows on you. It's really pulling out some beautiful uh, natural aspects in you. So literally Seven of Cups, Ace of Wands, the more you keep your, your emotional self open towards this, you expand it, you explore it, you poke it, you prod it, you give it more happy, healthy energy, and it puts you in kind of a upright position as the emperor here. It feels right. Whatever this is feels right. And I just see you kind of taking your time. It's not rushed at all. I kind of see you taking your time emotionally unfolding to this, and it feels good. It does. It makes you feel strong and empowered, and if we're going to connect uh, to somebody from the heart, well, by golly, that's what I had better do, right? Otherwise, what's the freaking point? If we're connecting to someone that doesn't bring out our best but keeps us neutral, or, goodness forbid, brings out our worst, we don't want that connection. No, no, no. What would be the freaking point? So we want someone who can activate the old heart space. We want someone who can draw our softer side and our stronger side and our empowered side because they make us see 
and feel possibilities in ourselves and outside of ourselves. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, five of Wands, the world, the Nine of Pentacles. Um, something, FYI, something that you've been struggling with will be put to rest soon. It will stop. Don't quite know what that is, but it's coming across as internal conflict, a fight that you've been uh, experiencing inside of yourself with the Five of Wands. The world is here claiming that. Do keep in mind, guys, the Five of Wands can be internal or external. The reason why I'm leaning into internal, I'll tell you my thought process, is because you're showing me advanced individuation. That's why. So when we can put our internal conflicts to rest, such as the world indicates here, we as people shine. Not for anyone else, ourselves. We can relax in knowing and take comfort in who we are and what the heck we're about. So this is real experience. So while you, emotionally opening up towards this, expands you as the emperor, who you are as a person is lovely and grounded and founded. Okay? So like I said, I don't know what the internal conflict represents, but it's... His time is coming to a close. At first, I wasn't sure where you're going with that. I was like, wait a minute, why are you showing me the Five of Wands after you have this beautiful expanse? And uh, it is. It's an expanse, though, that has no pressure attached to it. It seems like you're unfolding to it at your own time and your own pace and in your own space. And as you do this, something about the fight in there dies. Okay. And then I just see you as the remainder. So it's beautiful, guys. I love this. You look great. I like the way you're unfolding. I like the way you're expanding into what looks like an emotional space. And it, it seems to do well for you. The more you accept it and open up towards it, the better it looks on you. But that this is a really interesting piece here. Some internal conflict has passing. And then you feel like you, the letter B, okay? And we have the medallion um, of a child, okay? So there is, the medallion of the child has many meanings. The first that people think of, obviously, is that perhaps children are involved or someone has a child or even that dependent, full stop. And then also what I could see here is a childlike wonder as things unfold and um, there's a sense of magic because children do tend to believe kind of in those forms of uh, other thinking, worldly thinking, magical thinking in the forms of how is this happening? It's all so magical. So, because it, it could leave that impression when things unfold like this. Absolutely. There's a wonder here of just being open to things um, without putting all these constraints on it like adults would. So there's that as well. But yeah, the medallion of a child. It's actually kind of sweet. Just B and the child medallion, okay? Oh, okay, we'll do a couple more. Okay. That's just two. Eh, just two. It's like, it was just two, Christina. I know. We have the letter O. And we have the letter A, and we have the medallion of Leo, but the face word up as generous. Okay? Feeling generous in this, or being made to feel generous, or something like that. Something that really provokes a giving nature in you. Okay? Maybe? All right? All right. I hope this helped you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Libra, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Oh, I've got some vocal dipping today. Yes, indeed. I was just telling somebody, somewhere between the high humidity and no humidity, I either have one machine running or the other, <laughs> the humidifier or the dehumidifier. <laughs> either my vocals are way too damp or they're way too dry. <laughs> What's going on, please? What's going on, please? Show me Libra. Show me Libra. I should just leave them both on and let them battle it out, right? Show me Libra, please. Show me Libra, show me Libra, show me Libra. We had an intense, and I mean intense, uh, thunderstorm last night. In fact, we even had a tornado warning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that messed with the atmosphere just a wee bit. Sun's out now, though it's a beautiful day now. You would have never known the absolute howling in the storms last night. Oh, my goodness. What's going on, please? I'm smelling soap. Did someone just get out of the shower? I mean, it's really strong. It is a very strong, and I'm just now smelling it. What's going on? That's a lot. That's a very soapy smell. Mm-hmm. That's well, for somebody somewhere. Is that dial? Ah, it's very strong. Okay. Wow. I don't know. Maybe we just got done washing up. I don't know. I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> 
Sometimes I get the um, the old olfactory there on a, a, a an impression. Ooh, I haven't had one of those in a long time. Wow. Okay. Nine of Pentacles. Yay. Ten of Pentacles. King of Wands. Well, aren't you just fit to be tied? Yes. The Empress. Oh, okay. Five of Cups. A little bit of sadness there. Seven of Pentacles. Okay. Two of Wands. Nine of Cups. Yeah. King of Swords. Okay. Yeah, we got a couple of energies here today. Okay. You, you look fantastic. You look absolutely fantastic. You look healthy, wealthy, abundant, even if you're not like head over heels rich. That's not what I'm talking about. Your sense of establishment is here. Your sense of stability is here. Your world is kind of set. And you're like, thank you. I worked very hard on it. So the Nine of Pentacles is a strong sense of self in that Ten of Pentacles. You're, you're, you're saying, I did that. Thank you. I did all of it. I did most of it. <laughs> Something. And it's not cheeky. It is a certain level of, however, earned pride. All the pentacles add up, so you're darn right it's earned. That King of Wands also says, I got this. I have everything just where I want it. Thank you. I worked very hard for this. Everything you see here is of my design or by my hand. A little bit of both. Whatever. Point is, I feel really good. You're like, I'm not going to change a thing unless I want to. You know, it's uh, you've done very well. High levels of stability. You know, maybe you're making bank. I don't know. I don't care. You look great. You look healthy. And um, you're excited by it all. You don't consider your Ten of Pentacles, and I like this, because I see people make Ten of Pentacles all the time. That doesn't mean they're happy with it. The hard part is maintenance. So Ten of Pentacles is the tree of life. It's the roots that touch many, many things. It goes beyond our personal sense of home and finances. It says, this is my community. Sorry about that. Storage full. What are you going to do? Automatic shutdown. Had to take a moment. Clean out the uh, old camera there, and um, there we go. <laughs> Let's get back to it, shall we? So fun, just randomly shut down. Storage is full. Shut down. My favorite. But yeah, like I said, you know, the Ten of Pentacles, by comparison, it's easier to create it than maintain it. And you're saying it's quite the joy for you to maintain your world that you, that you love what you do and everything that you put into it every day. You said it really exemplifies the best of you every day. And it shows. Look at that. You're showing me wealth of competence and and will to do. And I'm excited to be me. I love my life. You know, you don't go in there begrudgingly maintain your Ten of Pentacles every day. No, you take pride in it. You're saying it's a big part of who you are. We jump on down here a wee bit. We have energy that's slightly different. So while this might be you, it could also be someone else. The Empress, Five of Cups, Seven of Pentacles. I have someone here who is showing me that more than not, they prefer to be empowered. Okay, that's typically who they are, okay? More often than not, they say, I like me, and uh, I'm pretty good about living my own particular life as well. And the Seven of Pentacles, Five of Cups, we have a long-standing owie in there, pain. Five of Cups is echoes of the past, so it is old pain, and it really hasn't seemed to shift it too much. It hasn't shifted too well. Seven of Pentacles, um, we haven't done too much with that Five of Cups, it seems to not get worse, but it doesn't seem to get better. So that is stagnant emotional sadness. Um, and that kind of flies in the face of the idea of empowerment, but that kind of tells me how outstanding of a sore point it is for this person who I believe would typically be able to work through upsets and pains and disappointments. That's typically, you know, an MO for empowerment. My ability to work through the difficult things, not just take glory for all the good things. But for some reason, this pain is outstanding and it's kind of stuck and it doesn't seem to, like I say, it doesn't get better, it doesn't get worse. So this is either you at the internal process and you have your outward process or this is someone else. I don't know if they're right there beside you or if you two are disconnected, I couldn't say. Down here we have the two of wands the Nine of Cups, the King of Swords. So someone's making a decision soon. Okay. A thoughtful decision about what's right for them and what does that mean. And it is an active decision. Let's make that clear. Two of Wands is active decision making. It also, to a lesser extent, represents communication for that reason because once we've made a decision, we start acting and communicating on it. Okay. Nine of Cups, sense of love of the self. Someone having decided what to do, okay? Someone is defaulting to, I need to do what's correct for me because I understand I love myself, okay? 
I'm hoping that this is attached to this person. I am. Someone here deciding and acting on what they understand would be better for them, okay? To kind of pull them out of that emotional well of sadness. Because we want to get out of that five and into a nine. So what that means, I'm not really sure. I just know how you opened up is so brilliant. This energy, while it's comparable in terms of empowerment and operation and that sense of spirit and can do it too, it's not at the same emotional level that you're showing me. Okay. Hopefully I'm seeing someone making decisions that helps them feel better. An idea of what to do. Because it looks like, to be honest, it's overdue. Okay. And get this person back into a place of empowerment. Bare minimum making decisions that's correct for them. Okay. Or you. If you identify with this whole thing, the whole thing could be you. Here we have the big mask and glasses. Cute. The letter Y. And we also have the lotus flower. Unfolding. A beautiful, gentle unfolding. Sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. The beauty of the lotus is that is indeed you don't really see it until it's fully extended. It's fully opened. It's natural too. Opening up. Opening up to one's powerful, beautiful emotions and understanding that you have to love yourself to see this and choose it and open up towards it and that kind of thing. Anyway. All right, Libra, honey. I hope this helped you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Taurus, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Show me Taurus, please. <clears throat> Show me Taurus. What's going on, please, for Taurus? What's going on, please? Show me Taurus. Show me Taurus. Show me Taurus. All right. What's going on? <laughs> the Knights of Pentacles. Mm, judgment. Oh, yes. Queen of Cups. Look at you. Slowly marching into a lesson about love. Queen of Cups. Expansion of the heart space. Oh, okay. Let's keep going. Three of Pentacles. Three of Cups. And the Page of Wands. Such a magnificent spiritual decision. The execution in reality is like, eh, it's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right let's see we have eight of pentacles temperance and the queen of swords determination here determination hammer it out work it out that's what's up that's what's going on so your your intro here at the beginning right around mid-month is quite lovely okay how you're experiencing this i don't know but there you are at the knights of pentacles judgment and the queen of cups you have a realistic, with the Knights of Pentacles, slow but realistic decision attached to you in judgment in terms of spiritual lessons. And I believe Queen of Cups here with the emotional expansion of the self, the heart space, how you perceive your feelings, your heart, its structure, all that good stuff. It's a lot in there. I would love to clarify that because in and of, well, each card in and of its own right deserves additional clarification, especially judgment, which always gets my attention. But I just know, no matter how slow, okay, it's not about the speed here. We're marching forward in a particular direction that says it's time to make a decision. Okay? It was here. It was always here. But the time is nigh now. And here we have the Queen of Cups. You know, the idea of your personal emotional self. This is what we're aiming towards. The expression of you, your love, how you experience it. And there's the lessons all up in there. Okay? And you have slowly but surely marching, excuse me, slowly but surely marching your way towards that. Okay? Having to do with emotional expanse, being in touch with you, all that good stuff. And possibly your intuition, too. The Three of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Page of Wands. Now, here's what it looks like in reality. You want to hang out? All that? 
and 3D. I know, it's mind-boggling, right? So the spiritual punch behind things, the emotional development behind things, and then in reality, there you go, that's what it actually looks like. The translation, Taurus, is dang near. Do you want to hang out? <laughs> three of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, and the Page of Wands. So don't dismiss that as being super easy. There's a lot that led you up to this. You wouldn't be showing me this. Spirit wouldn't be showing me this unless this was the correct pathway for you. And this is something that you, at the soul level, I know, I know, I know the soul level, all that. It's true, though. You, at the soul level, have to recognize as being correct for you. This is something your heart wants to open up and lean in towards. And then, boom, there it is. It's showing up in reality. So here it is, you trying to honor that in reality. It's a feeling. It's a calling, literally, here with judgment. Nothing's forcing you to. It's absolutely a choice. You either feel that and resonate with it as true to your story, or you don't. That's it. That's all there is. And uh, how it comes out is, you, you want to hang out? <laughs> three pentacles, three cups, and page swans. I mean, literally talk about getting things started right here. It's kicking off. And uh, I like it. The simplicity of it, anybody should be able to handle that. A little bit of three of pentacles, a little bit of three of cups, you guys, that's a little bit of connectivity. That's a little bit of uh, building, cooperation. Like I said, emotional development, 3D development. I put down a pentacle, you put down a pentacle. We connect at the emotional level. But again, it's all page of wands. So it's opening up towards this. It's active construction. It's healthy. It's easy. It's manageable. You got this, okay? I don't know why it took such a wallop, okay, to kind of nudge you over here, but it did. I mean, you know, when the universe knocks on Taurus' door, it's typically not subtle. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, why are you bothering me again? Because we told you that 10 years ago, Taurus, it's time. What? That was only 10 years ago? Are you sure? Did I get a final notice? We sent you five. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, maybe it is time. That... There you go. Once more, I'm not picking on you. And of course, I'm exaggerating the collective experience. I have little stories for all 12 signs, honey. Trust me, it's not just you. Um, there you go. Eight of Pentacles, Temperance, and the Queen of Swords. What I like here is a strong mindset, though. Again, the simplicity in reality. But what's behind it is a very strong sense of self-resolution, particularly of the mind and then also the heart space, to work through something. You're like, by God, I'm going to do it. Eight of Pentacles. I'm doing this. You're all over that. Eight of Pentacles, Temperance, Queen of Swords. As you open up towards this, it represents an opportunity to work on peace and healing for you literally to feel more complete. And that's a beautiful thing. You're expanding yourself, who you are as a person. You're really finalizing it. You're hammering those details out. I love this. This is a really strong sense of this is for me. I like this. I like what I see in me. I'm going to keep constructing in this way. And I see you backing up those decisions with almost a righteous firmness of mind because you know it's correct for you. So that talk about being adamant. You're like, I'm going to keep doing this because this is awesome. Yeah, it is. It's giving you a sense of self, peace, release. I love this. Just a little bit of three of pentacles and three of cups. Why the timing's now? Why you feel it now? Couldn't say. I don't know. That's your particular judgment. But I like how you're literally picking up that ball and running with it. You're like, I'm, I'm all about this now. I love it. I do. I love it. Look at you. You're, I love this. Literal self-development, reinforcing your will, knowing that this is correct, feeling the, 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 the flow of patience. Excuse me. That's my list. Patience. I was trying to combine those words. <laughs> patience and peace. The flow that that brings you as you work through this is magnificent. That is absolutely wonderful. Wow. Taurus, I love this for you. I am absolutely... And what the best part, my favorite thing by far, though, is that this segment is so manageable. It's fantastic. So I don't know who drops that page of wands. I just know the delivery is... You want to hang out? And then, you're, and then after that, you're like, I'm all about this. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm all about this. This is great. I love this for you. I do. I really do. Oh, we only got a couple coins. Everybody's getting that, that, that word generous. Be more generous at this time. You might have a touch of Leo in your chart. That's not the point. It, they're showing the generous. You and several other folks have gotten that. Be generous. Be generous with yourself. Be generous with whomever it is we're trying to connect with. It's there. You got it. The letter Z. So uh, out of fairness, because Gemini, I think, only got two as well. I'll give you a couple more. Okay. Here we have the letter R. What is this? 
the medallion of Pisces. You might have some Pisces in your chart. Could be connecting to one. And then we have the seashell. That's really fun to say. Seashell. <laughs> Try to say that three times fast. Of Cancer. So you might have some Cancer in your... But more to the point, listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. It's that heart space trying to talk to you. Okay. All right. I hope this helped you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Virgo, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Show me Virgo, please. Show me Virgo. Show me Virgo. Show me Virgo. Show me Virgo. What's going on, please? Oh, my eyes are drying up, Virgo. I need drops. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> super dry today whereas yesterday the humidity was so high we had thunderstorms all night and then also a real chance of a tornado or at least that's what the warning said but uh and now sunshine happiness it's breezy it's very dry though <laughs> and then i need eye drops <laughs> what's going on please show me virgo what's up thank you for humoring my my silliness okay Seven of Wands, maybe not. <laughs> okay. Eight of Wands and the Magician. Mm. I'll get back to that. Five of Pentacles, Three of Wands, and Temperance. Okay. Maybe you're saying not now, maybe later. Okay. Queen of Wands, Page of Cups, Two of Cups. Yeah. Later will we'll arrive. Just maybe not today. You are aware with a certain level of frustration, the Seven of Wands, which, excuse me, we must remember, is a form of physical energy that we are trying to deny. So it takes a lot of physical energy to show restraint, rejection, boundaries. Seven of Wands represents all of those. It kind of depends on the surrounding context. It's more often not represented as possibly a temporary block, one that's not entirely in place. It's kind of like saying, not right now. I'm rejecting this, maybe not forever, but I'm rejecting it for now based on reasons of boundaries or I can't deal with this, I'm too tired. Um, I, I don't, I, I, that sense of frustration. I want to deal with this, but just maybe not right now. So it's typically a block, but like I said, not always a permanent one. And it got me curious because the energy behind it suggests you actually want to do the opposite of what you're trying to block. Again, not an accusation, so don't take it as one. Um, you either relate to this or you don't. It's no big deal, guys. Seven of Wands, the Eight of Wands, and the Magician. Here's what we want to do. We want to communicate and the Magician. We want the communication to come to us from somewhere. And then energetically, you're also saying, no, I don't. I don't want nothing from nobody or that person. I'm not summoning the will for them to communicate to me. I'm not, I'm not doing it. 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 And even if they did, I'd block it. Right? A little bit. So that's where we have mixed emotions, a sense of conflict. Um, that just tells me that we have unresolved stuff. That's all it is. That's most people. Okay. We didn't get to say what we wanted to say. We didn't have final word or we didn't like how things ended or we're just not in that space. We kind of want to argue, but we know better. So we pull it back. That kind of thing. We get caught in these crosshairs of I do want this and no, I don't. That's all you're showing me. Okay. Specifically, though, you want the communication to come to you. And you're like, no, I don't. But the magician's there. So it's okay. I just want you to be aware of it, because that's mixed signals to the universe. Just FYI. Five of Pentacles, Three of Wands, Temperance. Uh, we kind of realize here that waiting is just breaking that feeling further. It's just kind of reinforcing that sense of fragmentation. So I never recommend waiting, even if you're doing it unconsciously or you are asking the universe for something and it's not being delivered, it's a form of waiting, okay? Even if it's begrudging or irritated. And again, it's not an accusation, guys. I just caught this Virgo at this place at this time. That doesn't mean it's for all of you, right? So take it resonates if it does not. The only time people really get frustrated is when they try to apply something that's not theirs or it's hitting close to home. And we don't want it to, okay? 
So I understand that there is a break here, five of pentacles, and it didn't feel good. And it feels like you've been in this position of wandering and waiting ever since. Waiting for that communication to come through, to hash out the issues, and then also simultaneously saying, no, I don't want that. In fact, I'll reject it if it comes through. But part of you spiritually was hanging back and, and waiting for something. Indications of that breakage and what it means and represents from whoever it is you experienced it with. And it may not be a person, it could be a situation. Because in truth, temperance, we would like the opportunity to heal with this, even if we kind of act like we don't. That's part of, again, that unresolved issues that come up. Stuff that we wanted to address and we didn't or couldn't at the time. Okay. So we get, and like I said, that weird back and forth with ourselves and with the universe about what we really want. I want to talk with this. No, I don't. I want to heal things with this situation or person. No, I don't. I'm waiting. No, I'm not. You, I'm not waiting. See what I'm saying? I see the back and forth in there. And that just, it, it comes from outstanding wounds, abandonment stuff, love, leaving something behind, the breakage stuff, you know? And the more we leave this unaddressed, the bigger that chasm gets with ourselves specifically, not with that person, because it's already done. It's with ourselves. I know you want to heal from this, okay? And here's what's interesting. For you, at some point in the future, there is emotional expression between yourself and someone else. We have the Queen of Wands. Creative, passionate, funny, lighthearted. Yeah, maybe just good looking. Who knows? Page of cups, two of cups. There is the expression from somebody's heart somewhere. So whatever stalemate this is in this back and forth, I want to talk to them. No, I don't. I want them to talk to me. No, I don't. I'm not waiting. I am waiting. Okay. All that kind of sense of detachment and frustration, that's going to be eased up soon. Okay? As somebody somewhere is expressing their cup to the other. Who it is? Don't know. But you will, in due course. Because, you know, at the end of the day, what we're talking about here is love. And where the real expression comes from is feeling the inability to talk about it. That's where the real frustration comes from. Cats in reverse. We're not listening to our intuition. We have the letter B, O, and Z. Interesting. Virgo, I do hope this helped you. Okay. And once more, take it resonates. They would just not. Just because it says Virgo doesn't mean it's actually for you. Okay. Check your placements. And even if you do resonate with that, there's no offense. What I saw was a normal human thing today. Okay. I've seen it hundreds of times, and I will continue to see it hundreds of times. It's not a crime to be human. Regardless, I hope this helped you. Like I said, take care. Be well. Capricorn, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? What's going on, please, for Capricorn? Show me Capricorn. What's going on, please, for Capricorn? Oh, interesting. Just out of curiosity, six of cups for some of you. Let's do that one more time. Show me Capricorn, please. All right. Mm -hmm. Page of Swords, Queen of Cups, the Sun. It's like you have an idea of how you'd like to be happy. You, und you have an idea of how you would like your heart fulfilled. These are such powerful components with Page of Swords, but you're saying, eh. I don't know that I'm doing too much about it right now, but I have a feeling. <laughs> I got a feeling. <laughs> Queen of Cups, the sun. You're like, ah, I feel like love, you know, love and the fullness of heart and the warmth that it represents. I, that could be around me. It could be. I could be open to that. I don't know. Page of Swords. <laughs> okay, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> Three of Pentacles, the Knights of Swords, the Queen of Wands. Yeah, something's happening. Something's happening. Mm. 
Two of Wands, the King of Cups. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. And the Queen of Swords. We got somebody here with a strong mind, a strong... So if you're trying to hang out, watch, wait, and see if you're going to match frequencies with somebody, I believe the answer is yes. Um, it's almost like you're daring yourself not to take it too seriously. <laughs> because like I said, this, this is some powerful, beautiful energy of the self and what it is we'd like to feel, but you're like Page of Swords, you're like, eh, we'll see. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like you're daring yourself to not lean into it too much, you know. Don't give it too much hope, don't give it too much insight, just, just maybe allow yourself to feel it. So it's a very interesting way in which you use the Page of Swords here for mild observation, not too much hope, uh, not trying to think too much of it right now. Because you can't experience that Queen of Cups in the Sun without understanding that there are elements in place that suggest you should be feeling it. <laughs> and it's almost like you're daring yourself. Don't take it too seriously, though. It's just a page of swords, whatever. Yeah, okay. Okay. Because I got you connecting to somebody that the idea is that maybe could go places. Something's happening, and it, it might have just started. It's a little tentative, three of pentacles. I think we're in the position now of building the basics with this person, the building blocks, if you will. So the three of pentacles here, as I say all the time, is the first time we see a buildable structure in tarot. You start there at the three of pentacles, see where it goes. That three of pentacles then is a springboard of activity. You start out getting to know each other, friendship, and then it can go into, like, say, a maintenance of a six of pentacles. Eh, it's Okay. Uh, consistent three of cups, which could develop into something else, like a two of cups, so on and so forth. And I do see the knight of swords taking action towards this. And this is someone whom we are attracted to with the queen of wands, so they're attracted to us. I do not know. Uh, but the idea is that there is some activity. And it does seem to be happening now, as in current now, now. And you're like, I'm not trying to put too much into that, though. It feels good, but whatever. We'll see. It... <laughs> It does provoke some natural warm waters in you. It does. But it's almost like you're not trying to give too much away because you don't seem to quite know where their reaction is. Well, let's talk about that. Two of Wands, the King of Cups, and the Queen of Swords. So whomever here is taking action, you two are sharing similar responses. Okay. As it seems like they get more comfortable in this, you are showing me less hesitation with how to experience it. So it's looking like you two are learning to tune each other. And uh, as you get more feedback that this person is at the same level that you are, you feel more comfortable expressing your heart towards this person instead of maybe just like a oh, hopeful, optimistic, but I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to think it's all that yet. Maybe with enough time and exposure, maybe, maybe we're on the same page. Who knows? <laughs> so yeah, this, uh, that kind of tells me your heart's more sure than they are, but you're not trying to reveal too much. Yeah, Capricorn. What you do? But uh, you start to reveal more of yourself when they do. So communication takes place, decisions making place. So uh, these two, these two folks are doing pretty well, getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and jump over into charms. Their approach, maybe if they are someone who has that kind of brighter energy, they tend to be much more. Who knows? Building based in reality, not try to get caught up in emotions themselves, which maybe you're reacting to in your own way. I don't know. Because this, their activity suggests, you know, I want to be taken seriously. See what I'm saying? Uh, something like that. Oh my. So many. Uh, <laughs> so many charms today. The letter N, M, S, and L. We have the Medallion of Scorpio. Okay. We have the Medallion of, uh, what is that? Taurus. Yeah. And then we have the Cat Upright. Listen to our intuition. Absolutely classic advice. Can't go wrong with that. As for Scorpio and Taurus, you might have those placements in your chart. Could be connecting to either one. Okay. All right. Capricorn, I hope this helped you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Scorpio, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Show me Scorpio, please. Show me Scorpio, please. What's going on for Scorpio? Mm -hmm. 
I want to say yours and theirs for yours. Yours and theirs? Mm. <laughs> I definitely distinctly remember having elements of frustration in it. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm glad to see you're connecting to somebody. And it looked new and beautiful and just wholesome. I think, yes, that was the word I kept leaning on. It's wholesome. It felt like such a wholesome, lovely connection. And then it had an element of someone realizing their star with you much too late. And they had all the pieces to the puzzle they ever needed. And they put those pieces together much too late. As I recall. I think. Well, you'll know next Thursday. All right. And it's that frustrating element. I always see when people realize what they need to realize much too late. And they had the tools the whole time to understand what choices are. But it was nice to see you. You made the correct choice for you. And that's all I care about, you know. It was a good choice, too. Very wholesome, like I said. Oh, gosh. Yes. What's going on, please? Mm-hmm. We have the... Sorry. My contacts are dry now. Eight of Wands. Okay. The Sun. The Knights of Swords. You should be receiving communication relatively soon. That will make you happy. And it's going to prompt you into a state of action almost immediately with the Knight of Swords. You're like, right, I got this. <laughs> right, you get your you get your Scorpio cape on with the big S, <laughs> but it's black. <laughs> it's black with red letters. <laughs> Did you know that was our power colors? By the way, it was black and red. All right, let's see, Seven of Swords and the Page of Cups and the Ace of Swords. Okay, interesting. Interesting. I don't know what this is, but you made a decision that you're not comfortable with. So that's, I appreciate that you kind of are reacting to this call. It made you feel happy. It made you feel warm. But there's an element in here I don't like with because you don't like it, but you're agreeing to it. Seven of Swords, Page of Cups, now Eight of Swords. That's a lot of mental confusion about whether or not to get your heart space involved. And you're kind of like, I won't think about that right now. That's a decision on your part to actively reject something as I don't want to think about it or I'm not trying to feel about it right now. Okay. Seven of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the Nine of Swords. What it is you don't want to think about today, you're going to end up thinking about it in future. Okay, so this is what I talk about all the time, guys, about paying the bill. It's like uh, whatever this is, it prompts you into action, but you like it. It makes you feel happy almost immediately. But there's some things you immediately kind of pulled yourself aside and said, Scorpio, don't think about this critical piece. It's not convenient. You're shoving that away. It's not an accusation. It's either true or not. And some of you don't know it yet because you haven't received the communication yet because it's hot off the press. Literally, with the first card down was the Eight of Wands. This is Our Lady Perpetual Lawn Care in the background. Ladies and gentlemen, our message has been blessed indeed. So just to let you know, while that initial communication feels good, the reason I'm disagreeing with your reaction is that you went Knight of Swords. I got this. Like I said, you put that Scorpio super cape on, and you're like, I got this. And it feels good, right? Until it doesn't. Whenever I see somebody make this mental kind of half-hearted agreement with themselves to shove their feelings out of it because they don't want to feel about it, not think about it, they don't want to feel about it. I have a problem with that. Seven of Swords... I'm not going to acknowledge this. Eight of Swords, in fact, I'm not going to acknowledge it at all. About heart space. So, that's a bit too many swords for one little page of cups. You're not acknowledging your lack of emotional reaction to this, or you're not allowing yourself to have an emotional reaction to this. Seven of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, the Nine of Swords. It's kind of like saying, uh, whatever this is, you want to have hope for it, but it's at your own cost. Nine of Swords. So this is where you might be cultivating a scenario where you're involved, but it's false hope. And you're kind of ignoring the emotional piece here. 
There's no seem, there doesn't seem to be any feeling involved in this, whatever this is. And you're kind of ignoring that or glossing over it in the interest of hope. So I don't want you fanning the flames of something that's only going to grow so far. Okay. Because while an Ace of Wands is attractive, that doesn't mean it's productive or healthy. Okay. And if it's causing you that much stress because of what you ignored, again, I see you paying the bill for something you didn't want to deal with. I just, you just like, I just need to act on it and it's going to be okay. So that in and of itself can be feeding false hope, especially if you have no emotional attachment to this or you're not trying to worry about the other side of things. Does it have an emotional attachment? I don't want to think about that right now. I just want to act. I want to prove myself. Something like that. Do not lose sight of what you need emotionally in the interest of proving yourself to any situation, place, person, or circumstance. You will not like the results. Um, I don't like the results. That doesn't look like something that's been cultivated very well. I I'm not a big fan of false hope, especially if it's seeing that it's not worth it. It's causing you more mental conflict to try to keep this going. And what? Because somebody said I could use your help? I don't know. I had a problem as soon as we hit this this pocket right here. You know what? I'm not going to worry about how I feel about this. And I'm not going to worry about the lack of feeling I'm getting from the other side. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it and hope for the best. So I'm not saying you use your intuition or intellect on this one. FYI. This is coming in soon. It'll feel good in the moment to be needed, I know, but um, when there's no emotional support around it and you're like, I'm just going to overlook that part, that's a problem. You have free will, okay? Tara doesn't dictate action, you do. And I see a, a Scorpio choosing to participate at their own cost. Okay? If something's not growing, it's not growing. Don't keep feeding it and then acting like you're supposed to be okay with it. Okay? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying, babe. That's you. This is the great white shark. That's Scorpio. It's in reverse. You're not listening to yourself. Also, some good advice. Don't pursue this. Do not pursue this. I have to agree. It looks like it causes you more harm by participating. It feels good to be needed or wanted or I can solve that. I know, but it's fleeting. You're not getting what you need to sustain your participation, guys. We're emotional investors. Just because you were asked for help doesn't mean it's emotionally helping you or that you're actually interested in it. I don't I don't know what your motivation is. I really don't. But boom, there goes that communication and you're out the door. And it, it feels like you're paying for it ever since. So if I can help prevent that, so be it. We're keeping this one. But yeah, I'd, I'd say don't pursue this. The star's in reverse. It's not your star. X, the letter X. Hmm. The hot air balloon in reverse. Yeah, see, we're getting a lot of reverses here. Uh, this is, we are not rising higher in the sky to see the motivation and behaviors down below. We're, we're, we're lacking insight on this one. We don't have enough ground or enough distance to see this for what it is. Okay, because you immediately launch yourself into it. Uh, it's going to pull out of you. This is the zombie, and it landed perfectly on that nine of swords. All the mental conflict this is going to cause you is going to make you feel zombies. It's, it's going to take a lot out of you. Okay. And then we also have the medallion of cancer. You might have some cancer in your chart. Um, could be connecting to one. That's not really the point. Okay. Be mindful. I hope this helped you. Put in the comments. Take care. Be well. Pisces, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Show me Pisces. What's going on, please, for that Pisces collective? Show me Pisces. Show me Pisces. What's going on, please, for Pisces? There we go. That feels just about right. What's going on? Ace of Wands. 
Ten of Pentacles, the Two of Wands. Yeah, I like this. You're someone who kind of gets excited about your foundation and everything that you have achieved uh, a little bit every day. You really do take your foundation a little bit every day. You try to make the best decisions for it every day with the Two of Wands here. And it looks like you've had a recent influx of energy about how you can positively shape or reshape your foundation. You want to change the landscape a little bit. You've had some ideas there. You feel reinvigorated recently very recently about a long-standing structure ten of pentacles so that tells me you already have your stability in place but there's something here about a fresh hope a fresh sense of energy and how to reapproach your ten of pentacles how to maintain it new levels of incorporation i don't know but you're making those decisions soon okay and uh you're kind of excited you're excited by some of these changes. It doesn't seem like it's overwhelming, but it's enough to kind of get you excited about your 3D world again, right? And it's not just your home and your personal finances. It's everything. It's family, career, your network, your community. Something about involvement here and having some fresh ideas about how to be involved in your Ten of Pentacles. So I like that. It looks good on you. I think you're going to be incorporating some new ideas too soon. It has something to do community outreach something that's creative a creative form of expression amongst many in your 3D world how you express yourself in it how you express your work in it how you reach people that's what it is how you reach people there's some creative tones in here I'm picking up on I like it okay two of pentacles the six of swords nine of swords bye bye stress well there's something here you're going to be walking away from ten of wands eight of pentacles and justice okay i like this okay you've recently had some new ideas as we've discussed that seems to be a portion that you are looking at pleasantly now and it feels good uh moving over here well, some of you are quite busy quite the busy beavers yeah two of pentacles six of swords the nine of swords you're saying i gotta drop something I got to drop something. You're saying I'm a little too busy for my, my own good. And you're like, uh, I have an idea of what I'm going to drop. <laughs> I don't know quite what that is. It might be part of the repairs or enhancements that I'm seeing over here. This could be a separate issue altogether. I don't know. The Two of Pentacles throws me off without further clarification. I can't see quite what it is that you're tossing around but it looks like you have some major concepts attached to you in terms of development maintenance what to do with what in which pieces or collectively the whole darn thing so there's something over here i see that you've been struggling to give up and it shows up in the 3d okay what do I do with this? I think you're tired of asking yourself what to do with it. There's something here you just don't want to deal with anymore. And it's coming across as part of your everyday reality. And you kind of wish it wasn't because you want to be excited by your everyday reality, not keep putting up with something. This is something that you've been wanting to let go of for a long time that causes you a phenomenal amount of mental stress. And you've told yourself every year, whenever you hit this stress bracket that I'm looking at, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to find a way to offshore this or stop dealing with it or no longer make it my problem. My, I'm going to do it this year. And you haven't. You haven't. Every year you come back to, well, I guess it's still my problem. I don't know what that is. I just see that you've been meaning and wanting and desiring to leave this and also stressing yourself out that you can't. So you've turned back around your little boat many times and picked that two of pentacles back up and said, you know what, it's my problem, I'll deal with it next year. Or whatever it is, the next time you hit a stress pocket with this, you always come back to that thought, I should leave this behind, I don't want it anymore, why do I keep doing it? I don't know, honey, that's part. That's not something you have to figure out. But I'm seeing you finally give it up. Okay, there is something here about I have to give this up. It's almost like you're saying this is the last time I'm going to be involved. This is the last time I'm going to be hands-on with it. This is the last year I'm doing whatever this is. And then for sure, this time I will give it up so I can put the best of my energetic, creative, realistic efforts into that which matters the most. And you're saying this is it. These are my core responsibilities. This is my core aspects of stability. I want this to have the best of me. And this pulls me right out of that. And I, I know I said I'm going to give it up every three months, six months, or every year. This year, I'm doing it this year. Just this last time, though. Just this last time is what you're saying. Very specific. Okay, so a little further out. 
Ten of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, Justice. You are going to be hammering that out soon, literally hammering it out, figuring it out specifically, um, how to let go of this particular burden so you can kind of calibrate your scales to be more like right about there. Because I'm guessing it's a little bit, you know, a little too out of proportion. And then you have this energetic flux that puts you into this. It's way out of proportion and you're used to it and you hate it. And you're like, I, I should get rid of that thing that keeps tipping me off the scales. But you've been like this for a while. Now you're determined to make it more like this. So whatever this burden is to you, you're literally going to be working through it and creating more space for yourself. Okay? I like what you're doing here. But it really did take you to sit down and really go over this. About what it is you can do and that you want to keep and that you're excited about what it is you really need to get practical about letting go of and how you can resolve that, okay? You're finding that method as we speak. Very good. I know what that's like. It's like, I'm, I said I wasn't going to deal with this again, and here I am again, right? And then you find reasons. I'm not ready to let it go, or it's my problem, and I'll, I'll figure out how to get rid of it next year, or something like that. Well, hopefully this is that year. I see you creating for yourself literally more balance. We have two T's, literally two T's, T and a T. We have the busy bee in reverse. Take some time out. <laughs> Take some time out to reduce that busyness. I got it. It's a big heart. You have a big heart. You know, you have a big heart for this, a big feeling for this, you know, a strong sense of emotional attachment or personal sense of responsibility. And um, I think that's where your stress kicks in. It's like, how can I reasonably let this go? You know, it's it's not for you. You gotta remember you need to love yourself too. And if something is that egregious, something's that difficult, understand that it's not for you anymore and it's not a crime to let things go. It's for someone else now. It's not for you anymore. That's the whole point of transformation. It's like shedding your skin. Understanding it's just not something for you to participate or deliver in anymore. That's part of self love. Okay? All right, Pisces honey, I hope this helped you. Put it in the comments. Take care. Be well. Cancer, welcome to your Sunday check-in. What's up? What's going on? Show me Cancer, please. Mm -hmm. What's going on, please, for Cancer? Of course, we got hit with Our Lady Perpetual Lawn Care for all the water signs. I know, we're special. What's going on, please? Show me Cancer. What's going on, please, for Cancer? Show me Cancer, please. Okay, what's up? Okay, Eight of Pentacles, Two of Swords, Justice. You're like, Christina, I don't know how I'm going to fix this, but I got to fix it. <laughs> Eight of Pentacles, Two of Swords, Justice. Like, I, this is my problem. I don't know how I'm going to fix it, but I have to. And I'm gonna. <laughs> You're literally working through something as we speak. It could literally have to do with work as well. Mm. But uh, yeah, no, that's that's a lot of working activity and some confusion and blindness. And you're like, whatever, just keep going. Just keep going. I'll figure it out, Justice. I will balance it. I will make work work, possibly. I believe it's work. Ten of Swords, dang. Six of Cups, the High Priestess. Meanwhile, ooh. Meanwhile, I, you got something else attached to you altogether that looks also emotionally difficult. You got, you got a couple of irons in the fire, right? Eh? One showing up as 3D practical. I'm going to work through it even if it's not all clear to me. I'll make it clear as I go. I will balance it out, Christina. Then I got something over here a little bit more on the emotional side, a little bit more on the personal side that intuitively you feel connected to but also separated from simultaneously. So the Ten of Swords, Six of Cups, and the High Priestess, you know, we have feelings of pain with someone who is special and or unique to us, someone whom we've known a long time. Six of Cups denotes memories of the past, nostalgia. Sometimes I do see it in future orientation as someone is yet to meet, but this, in this case, we know this person. Uh, Ten of Swords, you know, there's pain here, possibly an ending. Ten of Swords doesn't always guarantee an ending. Usually it's a lot of pain that precedes it, or it can be a marker of 
intuitively you're still trying to find your way around this one. What happened? Why? What do you feel about it now? Okay. What you're learning, I don't know, but you are trying to feel it. This one has your practical occupation. This one has your emotional preoccupation. This is going to be a quiet process for you. As you are feeling, learning, and sorting, feeling, learning, and sorting about this connection, what it means to you, and why. And why you're needing to do that, I don't know. I just trust the process, because you are. Okay? Intemperance. Two of Wands. And the lovers. Ah. So, there's a bit more to that story, eh? Temperance, Two of Wands, the lovers. Well... It's at this point that you kind of get to figure out what cancer you are. The cancer that has a very strong negative emotional reaction and says, Fuck you, them, no, no, no. Okay. Or you're the cancer that's like, yeah, I know. I feel it too. Yeah, you know, guys, you didn't get your high priestess out to not do nothing, right? with that, that soul bond connection. I told you, you're trying to work through it. It's just on your time, in your quiet way that's internal. Emotionally and intuitively trying to understand a connection that we had difficulties with, pain too, possibly an ending. And what do I say all the time? What's the point of learning or intuitively trying to understand anything if you're not going to do anything with what you learn? There's a thousand different things you could have done with that knowledge. The cancer I'm looking at says, I choose to heal with my lover. Whatever that means. That doesn't mean you're going to kiss and make up. That means, bare minimum, reconciling those difficult emotions. First in the self, and then with them. This is an outward decision, two of wands, that represents the dual nature that is the lovers. So it does take two to decide upon this. Will you? I don't know. But I see you healing, first for yourself, which is how ideally these things should begin, because everything begins with the self. The best healing begins with the self. And if you understand it's the correct course of action for you, you might be able to heal with someone else. But you have to understand it's correct for you first. And that's what I see you doing. Checking with yourself first that this is what you want to do. Understanding it. Allowing that to flow through you, to process it, to digest it. And then it shows up externally. So, if you ask me, it's beautiful. I hope you're not angry. But if you are, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, so if your first thought is that they're horrible, etc., etc., then don't worry about that. It's not yours. This is a cancer who checked in with themselves very methodically. It says, I better emotionally understand this connection because I understand myself in it and what happened and why. And having seen that, work through it. Perhaps peace can be had between myself and that person of some significance. Okay. It's an impactful connection, be it a Six of Cups or the Lovers. Um, what more, I don't know. And when, I could not say. When the timing is right and intuitively feel that you're in a place to do so. Okay. Well, I like how you straight up opened away with, like, look, work sucks right now. I got it. Okay? I got it. It's a little confusing sometimes. It doesn't always make sense, but I'm working through it. So you have an external process for working through things, and you have an internal process working through things, and I think they're both beautiful, really. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, too. Therefore, it would stand to reason the cancer I'm looking at appreciates outcomes. Making decisions. Just to let you know, I could have seen this and somebody chose not to do a dang thing with it. Big masculine glasses. Cute. We have the letter F, S, and the medallion that says practical, which is Virgo's uh, medallion. So you might have some Virgo in your chart, that sense of experience, wisdom, walking the pathway, healing because of it, so on and so forth. But yeah, no, I see your practical component too. It makes sense. It does. 
You know, so, you know what? That's a great point, actually. I say it all the time. Typically, how we handle one thing is a good representation of how we handle other things. I told you, I saw your external, and here's your internal. How you handle one thing, I'm going to methodically work through it until I balance this shit. Is that really so different from your internal emotional process? There you go. It looks like they work for you. We might have disagree with it. I don't. I like your outcome. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I like that a lot in this deck. I love it. I can see it a little better there. Yeah. Good luck to you both, eh? Put in the comments. Take care. Be well.